Are you falling into these common middle-class money traps? Welcome to the world of financial literacy, where we lift the veil off the pitfalls that can make or break your financial stability. You see, money traps are just like quicksand. They're easy to fall into, but hard to get out of. They're the financial habits and decisions that may seem harmless or even beneficial in the short term, but can lead to financial ruin in the long run. Now, why do we say they're especially detrimental for the middle class? Well, it's because the middle class often has enough income to meet their needs and wants, but not enough to have financial security. This creates a precarious balance where one wrong move can lead to financial instability. The middle class is the backbone of every economy, and yet they are often the most vulnerable to these money traps due to the pressure to keep up appearances and live a certain lifestyle. It's a tightrope walk, and falling off can mean a hard landing into financial uncertainty. So what's the antidote to these money traps? Financial literacy. Being aware of these traps and understanding the principles of personal finance can help you navigate the financial maze with confidence. It can empower you to make wise financial decisions that align with your goals and values, rather than being swept along in the current of consumerism and debt. That's where this video comes in. We're here to arm you with the knowledge and tools you need to sidestep these traps. We're going to discuss the five most common money traps that the middle class often falls into, from living paycheck to paycheck, to ignoring retirement savings, to overspending on non-essentials, to not having an emergency fund, to accumulating high interest debt. Each of these traps can slowly chip away at your financial health and peace of mind. But don't worry, we're not just going to point out the traps, we're going to show you how to avoid them and what to do if you find yourself already stuck in one. So, are you ready to take control of your financial future? Let's delve into the five most common money traps you should avoid. The first money trap we're discussing is living paycheck to paycheck. Living paycheck to paycheck is a phrase you've probably heard, but what does it really mean? In simple terms, it refers to a situation where a person uses their entire income to meet their immediate expenses, with no savings or leftover money at the end of the month. If you find yourself waiting anxiously for your next salary because you've exhausted your current one, you're likely living paycheck to paycheck. This lifestyle can seem manageable in the short term, especially when you're meeting all your financial obligations. However, the dangers of this money trap lie in its long-term effects. It creates a cycle of financial instability, leaving you vulnerable to unexpected expenses. Let's say your car breaks down or a medical emergency arises. Without any savings, these situations can lead to debt or financial stress. Living paycheck to paycheck also limits your financial growth. It prevents you from investing in your future be it through education, buying a home, or starting a business. It can also contribute to a perpetual state of money-related stress, which can impact not only your mental health but also your physical well-being. But here's the good news. Escaping this money trap is entirely within your control. It starts with understanding your income and expenses. Create a budget that outlines your necessary expenses, such as rent, utilities, groceries, and transportation. This will help you identify areas where you can cut back and save. And speaking of saving, always aim to put aside a portion of your income. Even if it's a small amount at first, it can grow over time and provide a safety net for those unexpected expenses we mentioned earlier. Remember, the goal is not just to survive until the next paycheck, but to build a solid financial foundation for your future. Avoid this trap by creating a budget and sticking to it, and always try to save a portion of your income. The second money trap is ignoring retirement savings. Now I know what you're thinking, I'm young, I've got plenty of time to start saving for retirement. Or perhaps you're in the other camp thinking, I'm too old, it's too late for me to start saving now. But here's the thing, it's never too early or too late to start saving for your golden years. You see, the magic of compound interest works best the sooner you start. Let's break it down. Compound interest is interest earned on interest. It's like a snowball rolling down a hill, gathering more snow as it rolls. The longer the hill, the larger the snowball at the end. In the same way, the earlier you start saving, the more your money grows over time. Imagine two friends, Alex and Bailey. Alex starts saving at 25 years old, putting away $100 a month. Bailey waits until she's 35 to start doing the same. By the time they both reach 65, even though they've each saved the same amount monthly, Alex has a significantly larger nest egg. Why? Because Alex's money had 10 more years to earn interest, and that interest earned interest and so on. That's the power of compound interest. 
Now what happens when you ignore retirement savings? Well, you're gambling with your future. Without a nest egg you may find yourself working well into your golden years or relying on social security, which may not be enough to cover your living expenses. And let's not forget, retirement is a time to relax and enjoy life, not worry about money. So whether you're just starting your career or are well into it, remember the importance of saving for retirement. If you're young, time is on your side. If you're older, it's better late than never. Start small if you have to, but start. Your future self will thank you. Remember, it's never too early or too late to start saving for retirement. The third money trap is overspending on non-essentials. Picture this. You've just received your paycheck and you're excited about the prospect of treating yourself. Maybe it's a new pair of shoes, a fancy dinner, or the latest tech gadget. It's okay to splurge once in a while, right? Well, it's not that simple. Overspending on non-essential items is a slippery slope that can lead to financial instability. These are items or experiences that, while nice to have, are not necessary for your survival or well-being. They're the extras, the luxuries, the wants, rather than the needs. Now there's nothing wrong with enjoying the finer things in life, but it becomes a problem when it starts eating into your budget for essential expenses, like rent, groceries, utilities, and savings. And let's be real, it's easy to rationalize these purchases. Online shopping has made it more convenient than ever to buy non-essentials. Just a click of a button and boom, a shiny new object is on its way to your doorstep. But here's the kicker. These non-essential purchases can add up quickly. Before you know it, you're left with a dwindling bank account and a pile of things you don't really need. It's a cycle that can be hard to break, but it's not impossible. The key is to create a budget and stick to it. This can help you understand where your money is going and how much you can afford to spend on non-essentials. It's also important to distinguish between wants and needs. A new smartphone might be nice, but if your current one is still working fine, it's probably a want, not a need. And remember, it's okay to say no to yourself sometimes. It might be tough in the moment, but think of it as an investment in your future financial stability. The temporary pleasure of buying something new often pales in comparison to the long-lasting satisfaction of being financially secure. Always prioritize your needs over your wants, and remember that delayed gratification can lead to long-term financial stability. The fourth money trap is not having an emergency fund. This trap is one that can sneak up on you, and when it does, it can have disastrous consequences. An emergency fund is like your financial safety net. It's there to catch you when life throws a curveball your way. Unexpected expenses are just that unexpected. They can come in many forms, from a sudden job loss, to a major home repair, to a medical emergency. Without an emergency fund, these unexpected costs can force you into debt, or worse, financial ruin. But with an emergency fund, you have money set aside specifically for these types of situations. It provides a buffer between you and the financial hardship that can come from unexpected expenses. This buffer can be the difference between weathering a financial storm and being swept away by it. How much should you have in your emergency fund? Well, financial experts typically recommend having enough money to cover three to six months worth of expenses. This gives you a good cushion to fall back on. But even if you can't save that much right away, don't worry. The key is to start somewhere. Even a small emergency fund can make a big difference. For example, let's say you start by putting away just $50 a month. In a year, that's $600. In two years, it's $1,200. And in five years, you've got $3,000 tucked away for emergencies. That's a sizable safety net that you've built up, little by little. So, don't fall into the money trap of not having an emergency fund. It's a trap that can have severe consequences, but it's also a trap that you can avoid with some planning and discipline. Remember, start small if you have to, but start. Every little bit helps. In the end, an emergency fund isn't just about money. It's about peace of mind. It's knowing that you're prepared for whatever life throws your way. It's knowing that you've got a safety net there to catch you. That's the power of an emergency fund. Start building your emergency fund today, even if it's just a small amount each month. The final money trap is accumulating high interest debt. There's a certain allure to the idea of buy now, pay later. It's a promise that beckons us from glossy credit card applications and online checkout options. But as inviting as it may seem, this path can lead us into a trap we've named the high interest debt snare. This trap is particularly insidious because it's not immediately apparent. You might think, I'll pay it off next month, or I can handle the minimum payment. But high interest debt is like a small leak in a boat. 
It might not seem like much at first, but it can sink you if left unattended. The danger lies in the compounding nature of interest. When you carry a high interest debt, you're not just paying back the initial amount you borrowed, you're also paying a hefty fee for the privilege of borrowing that money. And every month you don't pay off your balance in full, you're charged interest on your remaining balance and then interest on that interest. This is how the cycle of debt begins. Falling into this trap can have long-term consequences. It can affect your ability to save, invest, or even meet your basic needs. You're essentially working to pay off the interest, not the principal amount. It's like running on a hamster wheel, constantly moving but never truly getting ahead. So how do we avoid this trap? The first step is awareness. Understand the true cost of high interest debt. Look beyond the minimum payments and calculate how much you're actually paying in interest over time. You might be shocked to discover it can be twice, three times, or even more than the amount you originally borrowed. Next, prioritize paying off your high interest debt. This might mean making sacrifices in other areas of your life, but remember, it's temporary. The goal is to free yourself from the cycle of debt and regain control of your finances. Avoid high interest debt whenever possible and focus on paying off existing debt as quickly as possible. Scene script. In conclusion, these are the five common middle-class money traps. The first trap we discussed is living paycheck to paycheck. This is a common trap where you find yourself waiting for the next payday to cover your expenses, leaving no room for savings or investment. To avoid this trap, it's crucial to budget your expenses, prioritize needs over wants, and try to increase your income streams if possible. It's about making your money work for you, not the other way around. Next, we talked about ignoring retirement savings. Many people underestimate the importance of saving for retirement early on. However, the power of compound interest means that the earlier you start, the more you'll have when you retire. So don't delay and start contributing to your retirement fund now, even if it's a small amount. Every penny counts. Thirdly, overspending on non-essentials is another common trap. It's easy to get carried away with the latest gadgets, designer clothes, or eating out, especially when you see others around you indulging. But remember, these are wants, not needs. To avoid this trap, create a budget that includes a category for non-essential spending and stick to it. It's okay to treat yourself occasionally, but not at the expense of your financial health. We then delved into the trap of not having an emergency fund. Life is unpredictable, and emergencies can happen at any time. Without a safety net, you could end up in debt or financial ruin. To avoid this trap, aim to save at least three to six months worth of living expenses in an easily accessible savings account. Start small if you have to, but start today. Lastly, we discussed the trap of accumulating high interest debt. High interest debt, like credit card debt, can quickly spiral out of control if not managed properly. Paying only the minimum balance each month can lead to a mountain of debt that takes years to pay off. To avoid this trap, always pay your credit card balance in full each month, or at least pay more than the minimum. If you're already in debt, consider seeking professional help or using strategies like the snowball or avalanche methods to pay it off. These five money traps can be a hindrance to achieving financial freedom, but with awareness and action, they can be avoided. It's important to remember that managing your finances is not just about making money, but also about making wise decisions with the money you have. Remember, the first step towards financial freedom is awareness. Be aware of these traps and take the necessary steps to avoid them. Thank you for watching.